putting glyphosate in your body, one month, no issues, two months, no issues, three months, no issues. And for whatever reason, around the fourth month, you started seeing all these metabolic diseases starting coming down. You start seeing tumors start growing. You start seeing uh, cardiovascular issues, respiratory, all the stuff that we talked about before. But nothing before the three months, nothing before the four months is right around the four month mark. So you have these, so you have these people that have interest in Monsanto and, and other kind of uh, pharmaceutical companies that have interest in the, keeping the glyphosate going because mm-hmm. it's a cheap product, and you know you they they want to keep the Roundup going. You know you can't do right. a recall Roundup, and you know so, and if they did, man, you, you would owe yeah you would owe a lot of people money. The, the people getting sued, uh, Monsanto getting sued. So what they do is they have these own independent studies and they stop them at three months. Because they know nothing's, they they can't prove anything at at that point because nothing shows up. If you're out here and you're looking into a podcast or like recording, I am really digging Riverside. Riverside, you can sponsor us. All right, so we're not paying this monthly fee. Yeah, but I gotta tell you, man, I really do like this piece. I really do like this piece. So, okay, first of all, everybody, um, welcome back to More Than Black or White. It's your host, Paul and Brian. I want to put a disclaimer out here for you folks. The conversation that we're gonna have today may tr- may activate some discomfort and uneasiness in you. And I may be projecting because when Brian was going over this with me, it brought a lot of uneasiness in me. I'll tell you that. Um, so today we're going to talk, Brian. What? How can you pronounce what this is? Glyph, glypho what? Glyphosate. G. Glyphosate. Main uh, ingredient in Roundup. The main ingredient in Roundup. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, let's let's take it to the let's take it to the basics. Okay. Um, uh, well, first of all, thank you. Welcome everybody for coming back. Like more than black and white, this is a uh, podcast, a session where uh, Brian and I, as health and well-being professionals, with a com- com- combined fifty years. Can you believe that shit? Oof, man. man, bro, fifty years. I was calculating that on the way home. Fifty years of experience. Half a century, my man. Man, half a century, bro. And wait till we become a hundred. Man, that's gonna be two fucking cent- two cents. Then we might actually know what we're talking about. I think so. Yeah, I think we'll have a little bit more <laughs> knowledge and awareness than we have right now. Yeah. Free of making any promises, though. Yeah. Um. So listen, this podcast is about going over, um, what could be basic for some and what could be more in more detail for others. But Brian and I are here to go over all the different layers that are usually are smoothed over or washed over. That's one of the reasons why we call this more than black or white, because things are more, normally more than black or white. So we're going to go into all the different gray areas in order to help you with your health and well-being. And today is a really interesting topic, man. Brian, you're talking about glyphosate and Roundup. Yeah. Um, Like Roundup. What Roundup is the weed killer. That's it. I see that all the time at Home Depot. Mm-hmm. Hardware yep. stores all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, so glyphosate is a component of that and it's a dangerous component at that. Yeah. There's a bunch of herbicides in, uh, in glyph in, um, in roundup and glyphosate is probably the, probably the most deadly toxic one that's destroying our planet. It's destroying basically humans, <laughs> you know, as, as you go through this, as we go through this two part series, you're going to, we're going to bring up a at least 10 points that it's linking and is a correlation with man all these diseases you know we're we're at, we're at a stage in our you know we 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 probably spend more in healthcare than any other country in the world for i think we're like the last time i checked we're ranked like 40th out of proficiency and efficiency so yeah. like all these diseases like every single disease that you can possibly think of it's not getting better it's actually getting worse you know um, we're going to go through, we're going to go through a lot of topics, but one of the main reasons is getting worse is without a question. I mean, like doctors, scientists are figuring this out. It is glyphosate. And for whatever reason, I mean, we know the reason it comes down to money. That's why it's still legal in the United States. Other countries like, you know, El Salvador and Sri Lanka, 
Um, they're actually uh, a little bit smarter and they actually ban glyphosate and hopefully in the future, um, glyphosate will be banned completely, but mm, damn. Um, yeah, let's get into it. And also just a heads up, everybody, we're going to have some slides, um, that we're going to post up, um, in this, in this to give some idea of, of just of the impact of the, what this has on our society right now. I mean, this shit is, it's alarming. So Brian, so. Uh, when we were going through the pregame on this, uh, and I was reading the notes, and we started talking about about glyphosate, how did this all, like, how did this get started, bro? Like, how yeah. did this, like, how did this come about? Sure. So back in about 1950, glyphosate was first introduced as a, a chelator. So mm-hmm. a chelator, um, and the word chelate in uh, Greek means claw, so grabs onto uh, minerals. So okay. like iron, uh, copper, uh, zinc, and all these things. And what it was used for was to clean out and remove minerals from industrial sewers. Okay. Um, so in 1973, um, Monsanto had to stop producing DDT, which is a herbicide that probably contributed to millions of deaths. And uh, so they needed to find another flagship product and glyphosate would be their next product. And the the way they found glyphosate was actually because somebody dumped uh, a bunch of glyphosate out in the back and it just noticed that it just killed everything in sight. And some genius that worked for Monsanto was basically like, hey, listen, it's like, this is gonna be an awesome weed killer. (laughs) All right. Um, So basically, after 1973, we started spraying everything with glyphosate and we started using it for crops. And you, we've all seen pictures of these guys in like space outfits, right? Like white uniforms, yeah. backpacks on, and they're yeah. going up and down the corn rows and they're spraying not directly on the corn because the glyphosate could kill the corn, they're spraying it on the weeds. So during the harvesting, you know, the weeds would compete with uh, the corn to try to get more sunlight. So they didn't want that. So they basically just went to the very precisely went on to the weeds and killed the weeds. Little did they know that the glyphosate just doesn't go on the weeds. It goes in the soil, then the corn yeah. soaks it up too. So it's not like they're were totally, you know, the corn was totally safe. But that, so that was their mindset in that at that point. Um, so be hold on a second. Okay, but, yep. So let me get this right. So these jabronis mm-hmm. We're thinking like, what was the delivery method to this? To this, was this like a spray? Was this an airborne type of thing? What was the delivery method for them? And, and also for people that are like, what's an herbicide? Herbicide is basically a component that's that's there to get rid of undesirable vegetation. So yeah. like the weeds and and things that are outside of what my intention is to grow. Yeah. Right? Animals, like anything, animals that would insects, anything that would yeah. anything that would eat away at the at the crops. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's like if you have a veg- veggie garden at your at your house, mm-hmm. and you got deer that are coming to eat your veggies and shit, mm-hmm. an herbicide would be something that would try to keep it away. Yes, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so B, what was what was the method of delivery for this, bro? It was a spray. It was used as it was a spray. And they weren't thinking that it was going to get on the corn. You know what it was. We'll get into a topic later, but they they were saying it was safe because. Plants contained a a pathway called the shikame pathway, and they were saying mm-hmm. that's only prevalent in, prevalent in in crops and plants that humans do not access this. And it's funny because if you actually Google do humans have a shikame pathway, a lot of the information out there will say no, humans don't have it. But a lot of information says, which is true, that the microbiome, the bacteria in our gut, every single cell has a shikame pathway. So they were playing it off as like, oh, it's it's safe because it only disrupts the shikame pathway and humans don't have this. It's only in plants. But later on, we realized that every single bacteria in our gut has a shikame pathway. Damn, bro. Mm-hmm. And still to this day, they still argue that it, it doesn't affect humans, even though like <laughs> diseases are going through the roof and all people are just dying left and right. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Um, I'm, my, my apologies for interrupting. I just oh. wanted to get this because I was like, I'm th- I'm going through this in my head, and I'm like, wait, how, wait, how are they delivering this, man? Back then, mm-hmm. all right. So yeah, yeah, please continue. My apologies. Yeah, so from basically 1973 to 1993, these guys would walk down in their spacesuits through the crop fields and spraying um, weeds. Then in 1993, 
they were realizing as they were spraying the weeds, the weeds weren't dying. And they're like, oh shit, like, okay, this is not good. So basically the weeds, you know, they build antigens up and they, and they're, and they're, and they became immune to it. So what somebody did was they found a protein or a molecule in the weed that was immune to the glyphosate and they made it into GMO corn. So they actually made corn out of it. And the reason they did this, so now they can just spray the corn directly and it wouldn't kill the corn because it had this gene or this molecule in it. So this also saved them a lot of money. So they can just fire all these workers, hire one pilot and just crop dust everything in one shot. Um, and that's basically, but the problem is that was the first time it was sprayed directly on the crops. At, at this point, at, at, at the end, of, yeah, at the end, end of harvest. So, so wait, well, I want to get this right. Because mm-hmm. like GMO is a very common term, mm-hmm. genetically modified. What's the O stand for? Uh, genetically modified organism. Organism. So they modify, what I'm hearing you say is they, they because the weeds are like nature and resilient and adaptable. Mm-hmm. The weeds became resilient to this to this to this glyphosate. 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 I right? got you, my man. <laughs> I, I want to add another syllable in that piece of glyphosate. Uh, um, so, so it became resilient to the glyph, glyph glyphosate. Yep. So then they took a component of that and then modified it into the corn. Correct. So that when they sprayed the corn, um, the corn would be resilient, yet the weeds now would die. Correct. Some of some of the weeds, yeah, that weren't that weren't immune to it yet, and that's what we call a ready roundup corn. So there's ready roundup soy, there's ready roundup corn. So you have all the all these things, and now basically ninety five to ninety eight percent of all our corn in the United States is roundup ready corn. It's all GMO corn. So we're eating this shit. We're eating this shit, man. It's in every single, all our food, all our food, you know, uh, it's, it's, and people say, oh, GMO food is safe for you. It's not safe. You know, people say, oh, if, without GMO food, people would starve. It prevents world hunger. No, stop destroying our soil. You can actually make more food. And there's, there's a lot of research behind it that says people that are saying that GMO is, need, is needed to stop starvation or people are behind these pharmaceutical companies at Monsanto and they're saying we need it, but we do not need it. This is some foolishness, man. Um, yeah. And see, this is where I start getting jammed up and uncomfortable mm-hmm. because this component, it's a organism killer. Yes. They're spraying it on organisms that we take into our body and they're saying that it's safe. Yeah, it's it's, it's like it it's almost it's like I, I can't be, huh? It's common sense to most people um, that are that can think outside the box and are, are not sheep and don't listen to everything the media has to say. Yeah, it, it is. It's common sense, but the problem is, it makes a shit ton of money. It makes a shit ton of money. You know, um, the who the World uh, Health Organization, they know they they've said it. It's a it's a it's a carcinogenic. It's out there. You can just it's in research papers that they show, but they still, for whatever reason, they still have they're letting it slide, letting it slide. So. So, okay, so especially like seeing this right be like. uh, And and people like this is the thing why we, we like to educate on this, because. And speak, speaking of this, I'm talking about the glyph- glyphosate and also these different types of genetically modified organisms, because again, this is something that is pushed into our society. Like, this is safe. You got some weeds, get some Roundup, baby. Yep. That'll take care of everything. And it's interesting, man. My former girlfriend, my sister, oh, well, my sister got me a thing of Roundup for the for for around the uh, house, right? Mm-hmm. And my former girlfriend was like, we're not going to use that. And I was like, why? I'm like, it's, it's Roundup. She was like, there's too many chemicals in there. It's bad mm-hmm. for you. She she was free of knowing like all this stuff. Or maybe yeah. she knew and I was just ignoring, choosing to ignore what she was saying because yeah. I was resistant. 
Yeah. And now, like, and I was thinking about this after our call. I was like, oh, shoot, man. Yeah. That's what she was talking about. And the, and the problem and this, with, go ahead, bud. Sorry. Yeah, you have to do good. The problem with what? It, it's it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's in our air. It's water soluble, which is scary, which we'll, mm. we, we talked about earlier with Mississippi, which we'll get into later. Yeah. But it's water soluble. It doesn't, it doesn't die. You know, it just, it's in, it's in all our water. It's in our air that we breathe. It's everywhere. So and, the glyphosate, especially with all the modifications that have been made with the gly glyphosate, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Did it? Yeah. Um, uh, it, it it itself has become indestructible. Pretty pretty much. There's ways there's, there's ways which we'll get into the second part of the series, which I can, we can talk about um, and how to prevent it um, or how to deal with it best. <laughs> I mean, it's always going to be around us, you know. You know, but there's ways we, we can kind of fight back a little bit and cut and cut back on the amount of glyphosate going into our body. So, so, okay. So let's talk. The, so since this is a great segue, because now I'm curious, now I'm curious to know, like with the fact that these genetically modified or these, the, mm -hmm. the, these GMOs have been created. Yeah. What has been the impact on the human body? that yeah. has come out in research because i know there was some stats and we got some slideshows yeah. so let, let's keep going yeah. with the with the with the with the introduction of it so mm -hmm. like we talked about in the 1993 basically they started spraying it directly on the corn yeah right now in 2006 they discovered if you uh, if you sprayed on wheat late in the season it would dry out the wheat and one of the biggest losses for farmers from wheat is when it rains the harvest during the harvest season you can't harvest wheat when it's wet because it gets moldy. So it just basically destroys everything. But when they, so when they, when all the wheat in 2006, we finally decided to get, start spraying the glyphosate on it directly on our wheat after the harvest. So the wheat would not get wet and it wouldn't get moldy. This is the year that explosion of celiacs and gluten allergies happened. It was in 2006. Because this is the first time they were spraying it directly on the food. Before that, no one, no one really heard of celiac disease or no one ever had a gluten allergy or gluten sensitivity. So 2006 is where you saw the really big boom. And that's basically the, the history behind it right there. All right. So like, so as you're speaking now too, I'm starting to think of, it, it's interesting, especially when you, when you talk about celiac, mm -hmm. when I was younger, I never, I, I fail to recall yeah. any of these different situations that people are experiencing, like the celiac, glu uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, lactose intolerance. Lactose intolerance, yeah. Like, I'm just, I, I'm like, because like, yo, man, I used to love some milk, man. Yeah. Oh, now I, used to I drink, drink like milk, gallons. man, I'm blown up. <laughs> yeah. Huh? I used to drink gallons of milk a week. I used to love milk. That was, that, that yeah. was like my go-to thing. Now I look <laughs> at a glass and I get like bloated. Oh my God! And gassy for me, bro. Yeah. God damn! Thank yeah. God I live alone, bro. Mm -hmm. but I don't like, so it's so so okay. Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. So when this started happening, right? There's the, yeah. the, the, there was so when they started doing this, then they started to see this this pattern of well, shoot! Now these different diseases are starting to come up. And I was looking while I was looking at the slideshow that you that you that you sent to me, mm -hmm. and we'll dive into it in a moment. Like I saw a piece where you were talking about how it's in, like you said, the milk now it's in, um, like urine, yeah. like it's in all the breast milk. Um, like yeah. bro, like, yeah. Like these women are going they're they're having like birth defects, uh, with their kids are coming out, um, uh, with a bu bunch of issues and they're testing the urine and they're finding high levels of glyphosate in there. They're finding high levels of glyphosate in the breast milk, you know, this is, this... <laughs> Dude, it's it's amazing, man. I mean, like I gotta tell you, it it really it you know. So so here's my thing, right? That that like you know, I, and after after we spoke, like I was just pondering this, like, and I was telling Brian, like, I'm really I, this like makes me very angry and upset. I think that's probably why I was a little bit cranky. Like I was just like, I I really didn't want to talk about this to be frank and transparent, bro, because like I get fucking pissed off about this shit. Yeah. Um. Because like I see like, you know, knowing friends that have kids with um, like whether it's autism, um, the different defects and these these people, my friends and their spouses are relative are, are relatively healthy, man. 
Yeah. So it's like, it's like, wait, how are all these things, different things happening? And I remember even um, with, uh, with my last, with my last son, I just remember like just all the different um, warnings, like, Hey, this could happen. This could happen. We're checking for this. We're checking for that. I'm like, God damn. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. And a little, a little side note, it's not all about glyphosate. It's, it's a combination of a lot of things. So of course, you, yes. You know, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, like electromagnetic frequencies, the chemicals, like it's not just glyphosate, but it's all this stuff that added up and glyphosate's a huge chunk of the pie. And yeah. our bodies are not our bodies are not designed to take in all the stress. Right. You know, so there's things we need to do. And I think I think just what I like about this is a lot of people don't know about glyphosate. Um right. and it and it's everywhere. You know, and I, you, we hear stories all the time that are like, oh, man, this guy, you know, this guy or this this woman, you know, you know, the low body fat works out six, seven times a week. You know, how the hell does she get cancer? Like, you know, right. all, all this like crazy stuff. And, and, you know, cancer rates are going through the roof, you know, like, you know, they're like, I think it's like one out of every three people have will develop cancer in their life. At one point, they say 85 percent of people in the year 2034 will have cancer of some sort, you know. And we all yeah. we all have cancer cells in us, in us, but it's you know it's the, it's the environmental things that kind of trigger what's what's going to happen in your body. And glyphosate is definitely something that tr triggers the immune system. So here here's my thing, B. Um, yeah. uh, can, are, you, are you open to us going into the slides to the slides right now? Whatever you want to do, man. Leave um, the way, man. You're yeah, because I I want to I want to pull this thing up. I want what's that? You're my Magellan. Uh, Lead the way, yeah. man. <laughs> Magellan. <laughs> uh, upload a slide. Ah, oh, damn. Broke it, man. I broke that shit. Oh wait, screen. Okay, I think. Oh wait, I could do it, baby. Oh wait. Okay, here we go. Oh, I can do it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you can still see us too. Oh man, you people watching this are for a treat. <laughs> okay, look, look at that. This. Now look at this. Look at this. Mm -hmm. um, can I make this bigger here? Yes. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Um, all right. So here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and this may be di like small to see. So I'm gonna see if I if I bring it up. Brian, did that increase the size of it? Yeah, you look good, bud. All right, fresh. Okay. <clears throat> so so here when we look at so Brian, tell us what we're looking at here because this is. This is the mortality mm -hmm. and cancer, right? Yeah. So what what's like what what are we looking at here as far as like because when we mention cancers and then like how this is just everywhere, mm -hmm. how is it how is what we're talking about here represented in this? Yeah. So um, this slide basically it's showing you the red is where the most cancer rates are in the United States. Mm -hmm. okay? um, then it has like the chart on the side where it kind of tells you into. So what I'm what this what this chart is showing you is like, okay, why is let's see if I know my states, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, what's that right above Louisiana? I forgot. Nebraska? What is it? Is it Nebraska? Could be Nebraska. Yeah. All, anyway, all those red states, right? Why yeah. are they why are they having so much cancer? Why are they having sometimes you, we, we, they've interviewed people who are having on their third, fourth bouts of cancer? What's going it, on? Why is are it there? A lot there? Of crops in those states? I'm sorry. Are there a lot of crops in those states? Not necessarily, not more than anything. Midwest is probably more crops than anything, right? Yeah. So the reason, so here, here, here's the reason why they're having a lot of this. So you have things called tributaries. Tributaries are small bodies of water that lead into larger body of water, okay? So you have tributaries that like little, say little rivers and like lakes that are up in say uh, Oregon or Washington. They're very white up there. You see the, the color white? Yeah. The top left. Now, yeah. when they spray their crops with glyphosate, what happens, it goes into these tributaries and it starts going more towards the middle. Why? Because you have the Mississippi River that kind of goes down. All right. So the Mississippi River dumps right into the Gulf of Mexico, right in the bottom of Louisiana. So all these lakes or all these rivers all around the United States that kind of come together and they meet almost in the Mississippi, pretty much in the Mississippi. And then from there, it slides straight down. So this is where all this all this glyphosate is really compounding and meeting up, and this is this is the issue. 
And there's another slide in there that they took from like outer space <laughs> and they like brightened it up. Can you, if you bring that one up, yeah, there we go. Yeah. 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 So this, this is basically talk that bottom on the part of the, on the Gulf of Mexico, that thing that's lit up, it's probably about the size of Florida. And that thing is just laced with glyphosate. So many dead crops, algae, uh, so much is going on, on down there. There is more cancer in this area of the country than anywhere in the world. It's been, it's proven. There's, it's, they call this, they call this cancer alley. It's every, and then the people are like, oh, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why, you know, but it's all that crap that's kind of going into the, into their water, into their systems, dumping the Mississippi and it's going straight down. It's going straight down. Jeez, you man. Yep. Yeah. So like, okay. So look, looking at this, right. And looking at how these tributaries flow into the Mississippi river mm -hmm. and, and it is impacting our water supply, especially in that area there mm -hmm. in, in down by the Louisiana area. Yeah. What's the impact here? Cause we talked about the cancer. Like, I'm, I mean, like there's, there's one, there's one thing on the crops. But I can only imagine that this is impacting our other foods as well. Like, you know, I'm I'm looking at this is this is New Orleans, right? This is New Orleans, mm -hmm. Louisiana. Yeah. This is like the the space for great cuisine, fish, yep. all yeah. these things. What, what I mean, like I, I'm I'm making an assumption here, and I'm looking to get some clarity. Like, this has got to impact that stuff, no? Hundred percent, hundred percent. That's why mm -hmm. there's you know, so many people are getting cancer down there more than any other part of the world world not even like not even like in their in their city like the world this is literally cancer alley jesus bro it, now what scary. else like so so with this right because like we mentioned the cancers but what other conditions yeah with with the rise of this like what are the other conditions that are starting to pop up or are starting Ooh. to all right we're gonna like, give them good stuff now, right? I'm through. Yeah, I'm because I'm because yeah. This is, I'm, so like one of the things is um, anytime glyphosate and folic acid. Folic acid is basically a synthetic B B nine. The real okay. the real stuff is uh, folate, which is important for our body. But folic acid like is, is in synthetic form of B nine. So anytime yeah. glyphosate and folic acid is used in uh, processed food and it's used in processed foods as a nutrient enhancer. So mm -hmm. without once you use glyphosate, it just kind of kills everything. And GMO really doesn't have any um, good nutritional uh, value to it. So they add the folic acid into it to enhance it, to enhance the nutrient density. And what it does, it inhibits methylation, which is important for a lot of processes such as the immune system, neurological system, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, the GI, and detoxifying pathways in the liver. So those are a few things off the bat, which glyphosate will um, speed up the process because of the inhibition of, of methylation. You can't convert certain nutrients in this. It's, it's a whole and, other topic. And, and yeah. Well, yeah. That might be like episode 20 or something. Yeah. But like, um, <laughs> so what, like, wow, what, like, what's like when they're doing studies, right? Like, mm -hmm. so what's the length of these studies? Like, is this something where they're like seeing these, are these, are they seeing the impact of this? Like almost like within the year time, you know, five it's, years, ten years. It's funny that you said that because I've been I've been re listening to a lot of uh, Stephanie Sneff stuff, and she's like mm -hmm. the leading person on this on this glyphosate right now. She has a lot of good books out. She's awesome. She's a MIT doctor, um, has like four degrees from MIT. She's 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 amazing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she she does is she she has studies, and it's funny after like putting glyphosate in your body. One month, no issues, two months, no issues, three months, no issues. And for whatever reason, around the fourth month, you started seeing all these metabolic diseases starting coming down. You start seeing tumors start growing. You start seeing uh, cardiovascular issues, respiratory, all the stuff that we talked about before. But nothing before the three months, nothing before the four months is right around the four month mark. So you have these, so you have these people that have interest in Monsanto and, and other kind of uh, pharmaceutical companies that have interest in the keeping the glyphosate going because mm -hmm. it's a cheap product and you know you they they want to keep the roundup going you know you can't do right. a recall roundup and you know a, and if they did man, you, you would owe yeah you would owe a lot of people money with the, with the people getting sued um, on central getting sued so what they do is they have these own independent studies and they stop them at three months 
because they know nothing's they, they can't prove anything at, at that point because nothing shows up. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely it does. Yeah. So it's like they cut they so what I'm hearing they is purposely cut it they a cut that short. shit off, huh? Yeah. They purposely They'll cut, cut it, it about short. a month short. Yeah. So the, the study looks good. That's why people are like, oh glyphosate is safe, you know, blah blah blah. Yeah, what, what's the study on that? How long are they doing it for? Oh, they didn't mention it. Well, yeah, they do. Of course not. Well, yeah. <laughs> you no, know? It's, you know, it's funny, right? So like um like way back in another life, I was uh I was a I was I did public relations for pharmaceutical companies. Hmm. So we would um like you know when you go to, to the uh, for the um the FDA trials. Yeah. Um or I forget there was like the advisory something, but there, this is where these companies would go and they would present like their trial findings. Hmm. And I remember um when the, uh when we'd have to connect to these different clinical research associates as they were conducting these studies, I learned a lot about like um uh, the different parts of the study. So like, for example, the length, the groups, how they were measuring, like what are the measurements, like what are the impacts? So to hear, for example, something like this, that they're going to like, oh, we're just going to do three months. That's a bunch mm-hmm. of bull crap because there's no long-term yeah. um, studies on what's the, or, or what's the long-term impact of this component. Yeah. So, um, so, so when we look at, like, for example, you were saying about with the um, glyphosate mm-hmm. and the folic acid, how it impacts like these different these different systems in the body. Like, I believe, yeah. I, believe I heard you said the cardiovascular, mm-hmm. neuro- neurological, and the immune system. Yep. Now, with these studies that um, uh, what's some of his name? Uh, Stephanie Seneff. Steph- yeah, Stephanie Seneff. Like, so what were some of the other things like, are there, cause I know we, we talked about all the yeah. autism, right? Dude, this, and- is, this is, this is huge. This is like, right. um, we have a link in here. What we can do is we can, we can show the people on here too. Um, uh, but Stephanie Seneff, uh, she discovered that glyphosate plus no low nutrient food, like GMO food and toxic metal metals, which are very prevalent in our diet and in our environment. Uh, will impact cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity, GI issues, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, right, neurological issues, and autism. So autism is thought to be like a genetic issue, which is uh, certainly can can be. Uh, however, the simplistic approach says that it can't only be a genetic issue because it wouldn't be expanding at the rate it is expanding because there hasn't been that much of a change in our genome over the time over that time to explain this. So it doesn't really make sense. Like our genome is basically exactly as it was say 40,000 years ago, except for maybe like 0.001%. And yes. I actually Googled it and people, some scientists say there's absolutely no percentage and change from genome from 40,000 years, 50,000 years to now. So people can blame it on genetics, but to a certain extent, it might play a role, but our genome hasn't evolved that much. Right. So that's kind of gets thrown out the window with that, with that claim there. Um, there is actually a direct correlation to the rise of use of glyphosate and the diagnosis of autism. So one of the things that causes um, autism, um, so serotonin, so I don't want to get, I don't want to nerd out too much, but like sulfite gets converted into sulfate. Serotonin, which is your feel good hormone, grabs on the sulfate and it delivers it to the brain. It like shuttles it to the brain. Um, in sulfate, so like the sulfate is like a surfboard. Yeah. The, uh, serotonin be like, yo, let's ride the wave, baby. Exactly. Exactly. So goes, a lot okay. of people that, that can't break down sulfite into sulfate. Those are people yeah. like most of us know sulfites from like wine, you yeah. know, You're like, I don't, I don't drink wine because the sulfites give me headaches the next day. You can't based on the reason it gives you headaches is you can't break down sulfites into sulfate. So again, so serotonin kind of holds on to sulfate and it shuttles it to the brain. Um, And it's been shown that sulfate deficiencies in the brain is a very strong feature for autism. So glyphosate messes up the conversion from sulfite to sulfate. And what sulfate sulfate also does is it aids in detoxification of drugs, food additives, and other toxic uh, metals. So they've done research on uh, uh, postmortem autistic people and they look at their, their cerebral spinal fluid and they don't see any sulfate in there. Again, that's a huge marker into why people are having autism. Um, if you look at the, if you look at that link, I don't know if you can open that link and you can kind of show people here or I can just kind of explain it, I guess. 
You see that link from uh, the CDC link? Yeah, the CDC. So I got this straight, uh, straight from the CDC. And I brought this up because uh, it was interesting. I was I was listening to Dr. Zach Bush. Uh, he's another guy who pushes glyphosate stuff um, and trying to get rid of it. He's, he's amazing. I, I love that guy. Uh, if you have a chance, listen to his stuff. And he was saying by the year 2034, one out of three people will have autism. <laughs> and we were talking about this, Paul, like, you know, how much, how much does it cost for the care of autism? There you oh, go. Paul. shoot. Yeah, we were going over this in the prep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so dude, can, this is crazy. Yeah, so if you look uh, right there, it's like, you know, say it's 2002, one right. out of 150 kids had autism. Then in 2004, it's one in 25, 2006, one of 110, 88, 68, a little bump there, 69, 215, or 59, one out of every 44. Now in, by in 2000, so this this is this study is about three years old. So one in 36, and by 2020, had autism. So probably right now, by the way it's going, you know, in, if from 2018 to 2020, it dropped by six. So maybe you're, you're probably in the one in late 20s, early 30s right now. So Dude, let's say maybe is... one out of every 30. And so um, um, uh, Dr. Zach Bush was saying by the year 24, 30, 2034, at this rate, one out of three kids will have autism or some kind of sign of autism. Shit, dude, like, uh, really, the numbers are most likely, like, right now, going by the trends and patterns of this year, over the past several years, like, the average, going on 20, in 2022, was most likely one one in one in 28 to, 20, yeah. to 1 in 26. Exactly, yeah, could be, yeah. Absolutely. Jesus, man. Yeah, and how much is it cost? I mean, I don't know. I, I would say over a lifetime, if you have an autistic uh, child, the special needs, the care, the doctor visit, it's probably costing you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's no way any society in this world can 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 manage a one out of every three kid having an autism. We're a shit show as it is with our health system. Can you imagine this added on and all these other diseases? Like I said in the beginning of the intro, it's like all these, every every single possible disease out there right now, it's not getting better, it's getting worse. Worse. Bro. And our healthcare system's already shit as it is. So you imagine adding all this more stress on it, it's gonna, I don't even know what's gonna happen. So you it's know? it's very interesting, man, because um, like as I'm, as I'm just, it's really, again, I'm, I'm, I'm almost speechless with this, man, because, you know, listen, man, it, it, there's like for for someone to go through the experience and um and I gotta say like you know I've had friends that have that have had kids later in life right and I know going through it when I was having kids in my thirties like I was worried about like different conditions free of knowing like this stuff bro yeah and I I can recall like especially one of my friends that had his son later on in life and his wife is a little older, I was worried because like, you know, certain things were at play, like just like cause older age and stuff like that. And they always say like, it could be like, you know, there's all these different conditions that could happen to the kids, yeah. the children. But as I'm reading this, I'm just like, dang, man, they could do everything perfectly and still have a son or daughter that has an autism. And from what I remember reading about autism, autism is predominant, is, is prevalent more in males than in women. Mm -hmm. And female, I mean, in males and in females. Yeah. So it's like I'm, I'm. It, it, oh man, dude. It's, yeah, I started it's getting, like, I started going down this holistic field back in about 2006, and that was when I was introduced at a Czech Institute, and he opened Paul Czech opened my eyes a lot of things, and I followed a lot of mentors around that. But just like you are right now, like, I mean, you've been doing this field for a long time, and so yeah. like, like, but if I'm telling somebody that's like never really heard of this stuff. Your first reaction, my first reaction, I was pissed, man. Like, yeah. you, like you're you're angry. I'm like, dude, how corrupt can their can our system be? Like, it's like they they know it's causing cancer, but they do it anyway because of the money. So instead of like, you know, it's part of me is like, I can get pissed and I can hold all that shit in me, yeah. Or I can dedicate a portion of my life to teach people. Yeah, I can educate dude. myself and I can get the word out there. So maybe 
you know, if we have a thousand listeners on this, hey, listen, man, if like a handful of people they kind of follow what we'd say or kind of looking through their own research, I mean, this day and age, you can't, you know, you can't rely just on a doctor. You have to do your own research. Yeah, man. That, that doctor, doctor, listen, doctor listen, don't know listen. About, they don't know about this stuff. Right. Rarely. But he, so, Brian, you know, and this is the thing why I appreciate that we're even talking about this, bro, because most people will fail to even understand and recognize like this is a problem. So if they're going to the doctor about something, they're just like, I don't know why am I um, like I'm not processing and, and I'm, I'm like whatever, whatever the scenario yeah. is. Like, at least if they know certain situations, they can go to their doctor or something. Their doctor maybe has to do their research and get on their freaking game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, like, listen, man, I, I'm even, like, looking at stuff, like, with the gut and, and, and gut biomes, like we talked about. So, like, I, I want to, I, I know, I, like, I know we're going to do two parts in this, and I want to I want to start to wrap up in a, in a little bit of time. Yeah. And and right now, though, like, I, how how does, we talked about the brain piece, the autism piece. But then we also, in the beginning, we were talking about celiac. Mm. And we were talking about, uh, like, uh, shimmy, the shimmy shimmy y'all pathway. The shimmy uh, shimmy. The shimmy mama. The Wu-Tang pathway. The shimmy shimmy y'all. Yeah, that's what it is. That's the Wu-Tang, right? <laughs> Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang. <laughs> but, like, yo, I'm just saying. We just like, lost all our 20-year-old followers. They're like, I what? did. I did. Damn. <laughs> They're like, who? Like, like, yeah, the go Google Wu-Tang. Yeah. <laughs> she. <laughs> um. But bro, like, yo, so like, talk to me about like, dang, I'm, I got so much stuff going through my head right now. But, like, yeah. talk to me about the the shik, uh, what is it, the shik to shikame shik pathway, tomorrow? yeah, shikame, shikame pathway. Okay. Yeah. So the shikame pathway again, like, it's uh, it's it's in all our gut bacteria, and this helps you kind of detoxify stuff. So a big problem with glyphosate is that it bioaccumulates, meaning it doesn't it doesn't detoxify out, it kind of builds up in the tissue. Um, so natural wheat. So there's no, no way for it to get out of the body. No, no, there's no way to really get it out of the body. You just kind of, kind of prevent, I mean, like, oh, you're hoping your body, like, I shouldn't say there's no way to get it out of your body. Uh, we can kind of go into more details later on uh, in, the, in the second episode, how to get it out. Yeah. But like, you need to, you need to clean out your liver pretty good. So it can detoxify a lot of those chemicals out. But the problem is the glyphosate, as we'll kind of get into it, blocks a lot of detoxifications in your pathway, or the detoxification pathways in your liver. So Jeez. it's kind of like, uh, kind of, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a fight. Jeez. So natural wheat with no chemicals, you might not have a reaction to it. So people, I know people that are gluten, gluten, have celiacs or they're gluten intolerant, but they'll go over to like the Italy and they'll have pizza and have no issues whatsoever because they're stricter with their glyphosate policies over there. I've heard but, that too. Yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. natural wheat with no chemicals and you might not have a reaction to it, but when you add glyphosate, the glyphosate molecule to it, a hybridizer, a GMO crop, it changed the makeup of the protein. And this is why this is why the explosion of gluten sensitivity is here. It use it's used in wheats, oats, barley. Sorry, beer drinkers, that's one of the worst things. <laughs> sugar cane, sugar beets, potatoes, and like uh, they use as potatoes as a ripening agent. So gluten actually binds with glyphosate and it disrupts the process in the digestive system that makes the body allergic to which which causes celiac disease. And to be completely honest, celiac disease is an easy fix. If you have celiac disease, just don't eat wheat. <laughs> like, just, like that. I mean, it's it's that simple. Like, and I'm not just saying I'm not just saying this. I'm regurgitating what doctors that I respect and holistic doctors that have cured a lot of people to say. Just yeah. don't eat anything that has wheat. The problem is you have to know what things don't have wheat. Like if you go out to a dinner, you have like a steak dinner and you have like a sauce with the steak, you might have wheat in it. You know, if you, you, it, they might feed the animal wheat to kind of fatten it up. So you eating out might not be the best thing for you. So, but if you pay attention to labels and ingredients and everything like that, celiac is actually pretty simple not to have issues with. Just don't eat wheat, <laughs> you know. Um, hmm. But glyphosate is, is, a, is, is a bacteria itself it, and it kills good bacteria in your gut. One of these uh, is called bifidobacteria and lactose bacillus. Those are probably the two biggest ones, uh, back, good bacteria in your body. And this is really important in your gut. And this helps with the process of breaking down wheat and gluten. The glyphosate kind of kills those two good um, bacteria, the uh, bifido and uh, lactobacillus. And these are the lactobacillus and bifido are good to help break down wheat and gluten. But again, glyphosate kills that off, so you can't break it down. So, so basically, like glyph glyphosate, 
mm-hmm. is a treacherous invader that destroys the systems that bring the proper nutrients to different areas of our body. Yeah. Yeah, so basically it's like you have these they these uh you eat glute that's laced with uh glyphosate and uh you good bacteria is like ah don't worry, I'll, I'll break it down. Glyphosate's like, oh no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, not at all. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you not first and then uh you know. Dude, uh, no. No, yeah. what the f- what? Yep. Mm-hmm. Damn, man. All right, so um I want to start, let's start to, let's start to wind this one down, man. And yeah. like, this is dense for me. I got to tell you, like, this is dense for me, man. Um, Because, and I'm really looking forward to do the second installment because I'm very curious. I heard you say one thing is clearing out the liver. Yeah. Um. So I know that, the, I know that you said that there's some other things that, that are out there and available. I'm 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 distraught, man, because you know, um, for people like you know, there's there's this constant push for being healthy, and the thing is, is for someone to truly be healthy, they get to be extremely vigilant. Is that the word? Yes, yes I think mm-hmm. so. About their care, their consumption. Um, their processing, their internal processes. Otherwise, like their systems could be jacked up over time. Um, spe- dude, this is man, it's cause like this is a lot of stuff, man. Like wheat, oats. I mean, think of how many people drink beer. Oh yeah. Um, you know, the sugar cane, the potatoes, like, bro, I had some fries at lunch. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, golly, bro. You know what it comes down to, man? Like, you, you don't want to get yourself crazy about it. Like, I really believe that our body is an amazing organism. Mm-hmm. And I believe if you treat your body, 80% of the stuff you put in your body is good. Yeah. You, your body can knows what to do with the 20% of shit you don't, that you do put in your body. I like to do more on the higher end, like a, like a 90-10 rule. Yeah. You know, that's just me. And I like sometimes even higher than that. But yeah. the problem is it's it's flipped. Most people are like, eh, you know. I'll eat like shit all day. Maybe I'll have a couple of broccoli at the end of the night, and, you know, to make up for it. You know, it's like, you know, they, they have the opposite, you know, 80% of the stuff yeah. they put in their bodies process GMO glyphosate lace shit. And the other 20% is like, maybe they're trying to be healthy, you know, but if you live the 80, 20 rule, uh, I would say eight out of 10 times, you're going to be fine. Nine out of 10 right. times, you'll be fine. You know, so, don't, don't drive yeah. yourself crazy about it. Cause you know, but again, like, at least you know now. At least right. you know like what glyphosate is. At least you know what to look for on labels. Like like Cheerios. There's more glyphosate in a box of Cheerios than there is any kind of vitamins in it. You're just eating pure glyphosate, and that's one of the biggest selling things for kids. You Cheerios, know? yeah. Baby Jeez. formula, baby what formula. Doing, bro? Yeah, it's... baby formula, corn, corn starch, uh, soy. You're basically feeding your 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 kid glyphosate. Then. And then you have like older adults that drink insured. That's basically adult baby formula, you know? Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You know, it's, it's you're pushed, doing... though. insure is pushed. Yeah. Like I remember when my mom was in the hospital and she couldn't eat. They're like, have some insures. Yeah. You know, it's like a protein measure. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's the thing we talked about in one of the first couple uh, episodes. Like, too many people were like, you know, oh, what do you think of this product? Well, here's the nutrients. I'm like, I don't give a shit about the macros too much. I'm like, don't stop counting calories, count chemicals. Like, right. You know, well, what, what yeah. is, it, you know, oh, Jeez. there's wheat in this product. All right. Chances are it's been sprayed with this shit. You know, I'm going to tell you what's in it. What you do after that is up to you. Up you know, to you babies. Yeah. Listen, th- th- and this is, and this is, and, and this is like the more you know, right. Yeah. And this is why, again, it's more than black or white. It's more than saying, hey, I got celiacs. I got, I got, I, I get to step away from, like, I can't have wheat. Well, it's do you what's the, what could be the reason right and it's like okay what do you do to to really correct this and i think this is where we start to you know we can wind down now and like and, and get prepped for the second installment which is going to really tap into some other things a lot yeah. so aligned with um associated with glyph, gly, glyphosate yeah. um as well as uh some some guides some tips as to what you can do 
to uh, I, I want to be free of saying overcome, Brian, and mm -hmm. I'm almost like I'm more inclined to say reverse the effects of this. Yeah. Um, clear out the effects of this because listen, you know, I was talking to my client about this the, yesterday, and we were talking about this in relation to heart disease, and and it was funny because not funny, haha, but funny, strange, funny because we were both like he was. He brought up a point. He was like, Paul, you know. They never talk about, and he's on some meds, and he said, Paul, they never, they failed to talk about um, what I can do to reverse my heart disease. Rather, instead, what they say is, this is what you can do to manage it. This mm -hmm. is how you, this is what you do to take care of it, cover it, like put a, put a bandy band, put a band aid on it, like, oh, it's going to be fine. Instead yeah. of being like, okay, how do I bring the clock back to my natural state of health and well being? So yeah. I appreciate that we're going over this because this is some was, serious stuff, man. I was listening to a, uh, I was listening to, I'm, I was nerding out today. I was listening to a podcast on uh, <laughs> uric acid earlier today. I don't know why. I was in a car and I was like, oh, let's, let's learn about uric acid. And right. one of the doctors on, he's like, you know, it's a shame. He's like, I'll admit this myself. But like when somebody comes to me with an illness, my job is to not find out the cause of it. It's to find out a prescription to block it, the illness. And he's like, that's, that's, that's what we're educated in our, in our medical field, you know, yeah. Yeah, but more people we need, we need, we need to start changing this, that we just need to have a paradigm shift and we need, need to start learning what's causing this stuff. And this mm -hmm. is just one element. I mean, we can, I mean, there's so many toxic chemicals out there we can talk about and I've been, you know, educating myself about this throughout the years, but I think, I think the life say it's a, a, a good start with this. Educating. Edu education. Listen, and, and I think this is this is a definitely good start because I think it's important for people to start to know this stuff. Yeah. And again, begin to take control of your health, take control of your body, take control of your consumption, take control of how you clear and detoxify. You know, we've had we've had articles on a lot of these different things and like articles, like podcasts and videos about these things. So pay attention, tune in, because mm -hmm. listen, while Brian and I are talking about these different components on a bigger scale, like the, the whole thing that we're inviting you to do is to look at this on a, on, on a soul, on a self scale. Like, how does this impact you? What, what, it, what, are you, what can you take? And this is the encouragement as we wrap up here or the invitation. What can you take from this episode to start to munch on or learn about that's in relation to you? Do you have a condition that could be impacted or could be brought on in some way, shape, or form by this glyph glyph glyphosate or maybe some other sort of chemical? Like the thing is, people, and what Brian and I are very passionate about is like figure your shit out. Like we'll be a guide for you. And the thing is, is for your optimal health and being, there's you know what to do. You've been clouded. You've been given a whole bunch of hoo-ha and there's a whole, there's all these things like the shimmy shimmy ya pathways and the mama mama side. Yo, I'm doing no shit, 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 Now you got me all confused, man. Say yeah, see? I, I, I'm contagious, bro. I'm contagious. So listen, <laughs> so people, um, Brian, like, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm curious for you, right? Like, as, as we wrap up, and we, mm -hmm. we said some stuff today. Like, what's something that you would want the listener to take away from today? Yeah, just uh, read chemicals on a label. If something says soy, if something says corn, if something says wheat, know that it's genetically modified. Know that if you, if you Google it, it'll probably say it's good for you. There's no harmful side effects. It's bullshit. Like, yeah. know what you're putting in your body. If, you've, you've, if you have an ailment that's been bothering you for years and doctors can't find the underlying cause of it or you haven't found it chances are it's 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 99 percent of the time it's something you're putting in your body yeah you know so try to go more try to learn more about it um read read some stephanie seneff stuff some read some dr zach bush stuff and get more educated in the glyphosate um it's gonna it'll 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 change it'll change your life it'll it'll, it'll change your life um and Damn, I'm wanting to get rid of oat milk. Stop drinking oat milk. Yeah, I mean, like I've read a lot of like things with oat milk, almond milk. Um, that's that's another topic, but it's not great for the body. You know, you can't you can't you can't you can't milk an oat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I haven't seen a nibble on an almond anytime. 
<laughs> uh, so it's hard to do so that. It's like, yeah, it's you know, like but it's like the new order. fad, you know. It's a, right. it's the new fad. Like, you know, like there's other there's other things you can do. I mean, like water water is the best option. If you get good quality water, yeah, um, that, that that's gonna that's gonna be the best option. I would get away from regular milk. Uh, okay, eight hours to digest. If you're gonna go, if you if you like milk, I would go maybe like a goat's milk, which is like takes like twenty minutes to digest. You know, it's easier it's easier to digest on the system. Goat um, milk, goat milk, sheep milk. They have that on like Wegmans or Whole Foods and stuff like that. Um, that's what like you know that's what, like so Dude. my girl's kid. She was all congested and everything like that, and but she was giving them like whole like whole whole uh, like whole milk. And I was like, the kids, you know, you, kids are not supposed to have milk in their system after about after being breastfed. Like that's when you really should cut off the milk. You should we're not we're not designed to drink cow's milk. But if you right. want to have them have milk, have goat milk. Put it, put them on goat milk for a couple of days, just clear it right up. It's so much better, dude. I'm gonna get goat milk because I like matcha tea. I'm I like yeah. I was I, I was off of coffee. I, I got back on coffee, mm-hmm. um, and I'm looking to get back on the on the matcha tea, matcha yeah. lattes. Um, and I was using oat milk, man, and like, you know, um, like I'm ready to go. I'm ready to shift, switch that up. But I will go put the water. But I'm gonna give it a go with the goat milk and see yeah. what happens. Right on. See, I, I guarantee you'll, yeah. your stomach will feel better. You know, you won't bloat as much. It's just wow. easier, di- easier to digest. Shit. Man. Yep. Damn. Thank you, bro. Yeah. So listen, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for part G of part this two. as we come up. B, you want to say goodbye, man? Uh, I appreciate everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, I know we, we went over a lot today. Uh, leave some stuff in the comments and uh, we'll, we'll do our best to explain things and uh, tune into next week. Yeah. It's more than black and white, people. It's more than black and white. Peace, everybody. Peace.